So students, this section contains two paragraphs. Each paragraph has three questions each and every question has only single option correct. So let us start with the passage given for question number 26 to 28. Consider the formation of octahedral complexes. It is given to us that if the delta naught is greater than P, low spin complexes are formed. Low spin the examiner is denoting by LS. And when delta naught is less than P, high spin complexes, which the examiner is denoting with HS, complexes are formed. Where P is the pairing energy and delta naught is the splitting in presence of octahedral field. So under the conditions of critical value of delta naught equal to P, both the LS and HS complex will be formed as both have the same CFSE value. This will lead to the spin state equilibrium where HS is in equilibrium with LS. So this is valid for D4, D5, D6 and D7 configurations. The examiner further mentions to us that if the energy difference between the two states is order of KB into T, which is thermal energy, then the position of the equilibrium will depend on temperature. As delta naught increases, the energies of both states will decrease but the energy of the LS will decrease more steeply and it should be noted that conversion of HS to LS state leads to the transfer of some electrons from EG to T2G level and it will shrink the metal ligand bond distance. So based on this information we have to answer the question which follow. So if you look at question number 26 now, following plots are obtained for spin state equilibrium in which we are observing the variation of energy of HS and LS states with the delta naught. So students, in the y-axis, we have the value of energy, whereas on the x-axis, we have the value of delta naught. So students, we know that as the value of delta naught increases, the formation of low spin complexes will be favored because then pairing energy would be easily compensated. So it means that the low spin complexes should have a lesser energy in region where the values of delta naught are very high. So it means that the graph which is having a lesser energy in the high delta naught region which is the zone B should belong to the low spin complex. So the graph which is lesser in energy in the zone B must belong to the low spin complex. And correspondingly, if we look at the region where the delta naught value are not very high, which is the zone A. So students, we know that when the values of delta naught are not very large, then the formation of high spin complexes are favored. So the high spin complexes naturally should have a energy which is lesser than the low spin complexes because of the feasibility of formation. So we can say that the graph which is lower in energy in the low delta naught region should belong to the high spin complex. So as the value of delta naught increases, the value of energy of the high spin complexes correspondingly becomes equal to the value of the low spin complex and after that point, which is the region of critical delta naught. So at this point, delta naught shall be equal to P. And after this point, the low spin complex shall be more stable than the high spin complex as can be seen from the graph. So let us look at the options now. Which of the following is correct? At point R, the pairing energy is equal to delta naught. Yes, students, this is correct. We had seen that at point R, the value of delta naught is in fact equal to P. Let us look at statement B now. In zone A, the high spin state is more stable. This is correct students. In zone A, the graph for high spin complex has a lesser energy. Hence, it is more stable. Let us look at statement C now. In zone B, the low spin state is more stable. So if you look at zone B, we can see that the graph for the low spin complex has a lesser energy. Hence, it will be more stable. So students, all three of these statements are correct and we have to mark option D as the correct answer to question number 26. Moving on ahead to the next question. So question number 27, which of the following curve correctly represents a potential energy curve for the complex, which is low spin in the ground state? Students, we have been given different graphs. So we have to select that graph, which represents a low spin complex in the ground state. So students, if the low spin complex is more stable in the ground state, it means it should have a lesser energy than the high spin complex. And if we talk about the R, which is the metal ligand bond distance, we can say that in the formation of low spin complexes, the metal ligand bond distance will be lesser as compared to the high spin complexes. So in regions of lesser value of R, the graph for LS should have a lesser value of energy than the graph for HS. So students, we are looking for option A as the correct answer to our question. Let us look at the next question. Question number 28. Select the incorrect statement from the following. So looking at option A, Bond length in HS complex is greater than LS complex. So this statement is correct students. It has already been given to us in the passage that when the transition of electrons from EG to T2G takes place, that is with, during the formation of the low spin complexes, the metal ligand bond distance shrinks. So statement A is correct. Let us look at statement B now. Increasing the pressure on the HS in equilibrium with LS process in region of crossover 
will lead to the forward shifting of the equilibrium. So during the crossover region, the HS and the LS shall be in equilibrium and both these species will be present in significant amounts. So if we increase the pressure, the increase in pressure shall lead to the decrease in volume. So increase in pressure shall cause the system to move in the direction where the volume is less. So students, we know that the low spin complexes will have a lesser volume as compared to high spin complexes because the metal ligand bond distance in low spin complexes is lesser. So increasing the pressure will cause the equilibrium to shift in the direction of the low spin complex. So this statement is also correct. Let us look at option C now. Conversion of HS to LS of D7 system will lose one unit of delta naught energy and will gain one unit of pairing energy. Let's talk about this. So a D7 configuration, we can divide it into EG and T2G. So if we look at an HS complex, so in the high spin complex, we'll have the configuration as such. And when we talk about the conversion of HS to LS, we'll just have to move one single electron from the EG level to the T2G level. So what we are doing is we're just shifting one electron from the EG level to the T2G level. So this energy difference from the Barry center, it is equal to 0 0.6 delta naught and the energy difference from the Barry center to the T2G level is 0 0.4 delta naught. So students, we can see that when this electron is forced to go into the T2G level, it will lose one unit of the delta naught as 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 will give us a value of equal to one. And when it is shifting to the T2G level, there will be a pairing of the electron. So it will lose one unit of delta naught and it will gain one unit of pairing energy. So students, statement C is also correct. If you look at option D now, Mn2 plus in water will have a CFSE value of minus 2 delta naught plus 2p. So students, Mn plus 2. Mn plus 2 has a D5 configuration and water is a weak field ligand. So water will not cause pairing and for D5 systems in high spin complexes, the CFSE value becomes 0. So students, we can see that the statement given in option D is incorrect. So we have to mark option D as the correct answer to our question. Let us look at the next question now. For passage number 2, which is for questions 29 to 31, we have been given 6 open test tubes which contain aqueous solutions of FeSO4, H2SO4, MnNO3 whole twice, H2O2, lead nitrate and NaOH. No external reagents are allowed to react with the above salts. We can use only 6 salts to answer the following questions which are given to us. So in question number 29, the examiner has asked which of the following pair of aqueous solutions will give a yellowish solution. So if you look at the options, FeSO4 plus H2SO4, they will not be reactive as Fe2 plus and H plus will not react with each other. The sulfate ion is common to both of them. So this will not give us a yellowish solution. If you look at the B option, FeSO4 plus H2O2. So students, FeSO4, when it reacts with H2O2, it is going to give us FeOH SO4. So the H2O2 oxidizes this Fe into Fe plus 3. And due to the formation of these species, there will be a yellow coloration which is obtained in the solution. So students, B will give us a yellow solution. If you look at option C now, FeSO4 and MnNO3 whole twice. So this will be just a normal displacement reaction and this will not give us yellow coloration. Whereas the reaction of MnNO3 whole twice and NaOH. So if you look at the D option now, MnNO3 whole twice, when it reacts with NaOH, it is first going to give us MnOH whole twice, which is a white precipitate. And further, when it is kept in the basic medium, it will get converted into Mn2O3. So, which is black in color. Students, we have to mark option B as the correct answer to our question. Let us look at the next question now. Question number 30. Which of the pairs reaction in aqueous medium involve oxidation of the metal ion? So, if you look at NaOH and H2O2. So, NaOH is a base and H2O2 is a acid. So, it will just lead to an acid-base reaction. So, NaOH plus H2O2 will give us NaHO2 
plus H2. So this does not involve the oxidation of the metal ion. Na was in a state of plus 1 initially. It is also in a state of plus 1 in the product side. So option A is not the correct answer. Let us look at option 2 now. PbNO3 hold twice and H2SO4. Students, this will lead to the precipitation of PbSO4 in which the lead will still be in a state of plus 2 itself as it was present in the nitrate. So this is also not correct. Let us look at option C now. FeSO4 plus NaOH. So FeSO4 will react with NaOH to form FeOH hold twice which is a dirty green precipitate. And when it is exposed in air, it will convert into FeOH whole thrice. So on exposure to air, as it S-tube is open, the dirty green precipitate will slowly turn into brownish red due to air oxidation. So the open test tube will lead to the reaction of the ferrous hydroxide with oxygen present in air to convert into ferric hydroxide. So reaction C is correct. If you look at the reaction given in option D now, MnNO3 and H2SO4, students, this is also just a normal displacement reaction in which we'll have MnSO4. So this will also not lead to the oxidation of the metal ion. Students, the answer which we are looking for in this question is option C. Let us move on ahead to the next question. Question number 31, which of the following pairs reaction will produce a black precipitate? Students, we had already seen this. The reaction of MnNO3 and NaOH. So it will first lead to the formation of MnOH whole twice, which is white, which will convert into Mn2O3, which is a black colored precipitate. So the answer which we are looking for question number 31 is option C. The others will not produce black precipitate. We can check them if you want. So this will produce PbSO4, which is a white precipitate. We had already seen this in the last question. This will again produce PbSO4, which is also again a white precipitate, the same as in option A. And if you look at the D option, it will produce FeOH whole twice, which will convert into FeOH whole thrice. This also we had seen in the previous question itself. So students, the answer for question number 31 is option C. Let us move on ahead to the next section. 